Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This video is super cool, so I'm going to be titling it Full Speed PS3 Emulation on a Handheld or something like that. Uh, today, I got in GPD's latest model, so this is a refresh of their GPD Win Max 2 platform. So, people may be familiar with this, that this was running AMD's 6800U platform. This is now has AMD's 7840U on here. The good news is that this particular model does have LPDDR5X 7500 so we are using the faster ram that is possible on the platform which is great news the one thing that i do want to note here is that on the back you can see that there is oculink oculink i've been talking up a whole bunch technically right now i am recording on my winmax 2 6800u that has a 4090 connected it through uh oculink however i was doing it through uh the m2 adapter here and now we can just do it directly on the back of the device so we still have the 2230 available as additional storage as well as the 2280 that's inside the device as well. So really cool news. Um, there's actually a lot to talk about. I've already started exploring what it is capable of performance wise. The first video that I wanted to do on a 7840 platform is obviously taking a look at the Zen 4's ability to use uh, AVX 512 extensions, which RPC3, uh, RPCS3 can leverage. This can give a significant performance boost. When I first took a look at it, I was enabling and uh, checking on checking it, and I wasn't getting any different performance. So I went onto the RPCS3 Discord and said, hey, what am I doing wrong? And sure enough, I was doing something wrong. The good news is, is that you don't have to check that little box at all. Uh, it is enabled by default. You actually have to do something else to disable it. I will get those benchmarks to show before and after what that looks like. Largely... For people that have been following me already, uh, I've already covered 6800U playing God of War 3, and even when we try to bump static GPU clocks, we can get to around 45-ish FPS, but still not into a very good playable state. And there's lots of hacks that you can do, especially back in the day, but that was never ideal. And we are now at a point with a Zen 4 using AVX 512 extensions, as well as statically clocking the GPU. When we take a look at the benchmarks, let's just take a look at the CPU benchmarks alone. So if we take a look at the default clocks that is at the default state for uh, 7840U. Between 35 watt and 20 watt, we can see that we're still not getting perfect 60 FPS. We're basically fluctuating around 50 FPS uh, in both of them. However, if we take a look at a benchmark when I statically clock the GPU, so I override the GPU because it is defaulting to its base clock more often than not, what we can see is we are actually getting into a territory where more or less, we are at a consistent-ish 60 FPS. And I'm going to show you a video of me playing it. And it should be as apparent as it could possibly be that it is ridiculously smooth. So I will show you benchmarks in a moment. The, before we get too far into that, I do want to just kind of address like a quick how-to on how to get the best performance possible on RPCS3. Some of these things are general. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right-click on the game that is added in RPCS3, and you're going to want to go to check game compatibility. This will jump you over to their website, which will have a wiki where everyone in the community has been submitting what is the the best settings to get the best performance and fix thing fix games just so that they're playable and things render correctly. So you're going to go ahead and look at that, and then whatever is suggested there, you're going to go and create a custom configuration in my little part, it says change custom configuration because I've already created it. So it'll say create if you have none and change if you are modifying the one that you created. The one thing that's a little bit different is that on 7840U platforms is that we will manually be st statically clocking the GPU. Now, there are lots of tools that will leverage other tools, but basically the foundational tool that we're going to be using is called Ryzen Adjust and you should get version 13. Version 13 supports Phoenix. Uh, which is what 7840U platform is. And that, at that point, you'll be able to control TDP and you'll be able to control uh, GPU clocks as well. So uh, for God of War 3, what I have chosen was a 35 watt TDP and running uh, GPU at 2 gigahertz. This is just kind of a boilerplate setting that I chose. You can dial this down a little bit just to save power, specifically just to get a little bit better battery life. But you're going to be somewhere in this range to get a more consistent 60 FPS. And this is really where all of the improvements come from is so it's the uh, AVX 512 extensions on Zen 4 and Zen 4 being good as it is and then statically clocking the GPU on 7840U along with all the different configuration ch changes from the wiki and with those settings you will get a very playable experience in God of War 3 on the GPU Max 2 and any 7840U handheld so that's it for me talking about this little how-to 
let's go and show you what those game demos actually look like in real time. All right, and now here we are with God of War 3, getting an average frame rate of 60 FPS, which is uh, something that has not been possible on handhelds prior. If we were to take a look at 6800U platforms from before, I was basically hovering around 40-ish FPS in this particular scene. There's a lot of stuff going on, but it can show you can have a pretty good time playing God of War 3 on a handheld. Okay, next up we're going to be taking a look at Ratchet and Clank, a crack in time. Now we're not going to get a perfect 60 FPS all the time here, but we do get it uh, rather frequently. But it does dip down to like 40s and 30s. You can see we're down to 40s right now. The other thing uh, to note here is that I went back to uh, default clocks and we can see that we're around 18 watt on TDP. All right, up next, and this is a game that has been a long time coming to run on a handheld. This is Red Dead Redemption. Uh, we can get, you can see we're hovering around 30, but then we're going to float down a little bit to like 24. But you can see like it's actually super playable. Again, what you're going to want to do is follow all of the advice that is given on the community wiki when you're setting the custom configuration for the specific game. But it uh, plays perfectly. And like, I, I demoed this game uh, recently on the INEO Air Plus with 6800U, and we were pretty much getting half the frame rate, and this is quite playable. So if you were looking to get some Red Dead Redemption on in a handheld form factor, this looks like 7840U is going to be the first start of that where we're actually going to be able to get a taste of that. All right, so now we're running at 25 watt, and I have my GPU clock set to 1.4 gigahertz. And yeah, we really do need that power. So you can see that I'm around 24 FPS. Oh, got up to 30 there. We had that cinematic PS3 FPS for a hot second. But yeah, even even that's running pretty good. So I would say that if you kind of take a take a look at how far you can get this down obviously you don't need this much power the thing that you kind of have to divine here is trying to figure out how much power rpcs3 needs for any particular game and i'm going to show you that in this particular video as well when we take a look at like psn games like calling all cars where we can really dial down how far that can go okay and like i had said here is calling all cars and we are at 8 watt tdp oh you bummed and even at 8 watt TDP, this is no sweat at all. And you can see at 8 watt, we're using around 15 watt total. So that would be around four hours or so on this particular battery. Actually, a little bit more, four hours and 10 minutes. Anyway, it's a pretty cool little exclusive PSN game that came out for the PS3 that's available nowhere else and plays just fine at extreme low TDPs. The other thing worth pointing out is that even on other games like Demon Souls, this is a game that will run at very low power as well. And again, here we're running at 8 watt TDP. Now I haven't built all the different shaders for this particular game yet, so I might be compiling some. You can see I'm compiling some over here. So that might affect frame rate every now and again as I'm going through this. You can see that that just built with async comp. You can see little flashes and stuff as it's going. I should start pressing R2. What's nice here is that uh, I guess the latest build of RPCS3 uh, fixed the bug where the shield wasn't rendering before that needed to be hacked in previously, so it's nice to see that that's just working as it should. But again, uh, this is playing at 8 watt TDP, we're using around 15 watt total. So about four hours and change on the battery on the WinMax 2. 
Winmax 2's battery is a bit larger than most normal handhelds. It's around 67 watt hour. So that's where we're going to be getting a lot of battery life from that. Anyway, so you can see that even on, you know, bigger 3D games that you think would require more power really don't take that much power as well. But then there's going to be other games that are really advanced like God of War 3 that are going to be taking a bunch. So that's it for this video looking at 7840U on our PCS3. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Obviously, you don't have to go what I've already showed in the demo video. You don't have to go and push super high clocks for every game. It can use and spin cycles and waste power. So you do need to kind of step in and set a TDP to not waste power. So do be cognizant that it will waste power if it's allowed to. So that's the only thing that you need to be mindful of with regard to RPCS3 on these particular platforms. That's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. As always, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.